Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. As in previous elections, Latinos in 2008 were the focus of media and party attention. The Hispanic vote was variously characterized as a sleeping giant, potent and pivotal. Latinos were said to be swing voters. Would such high hopes be dashed on election day as they had in the past? To talk about Latino voting and politics in the 2008 election and the prospects for the future is Rodolfo de la Garza, Eaton Professor of Administrative Law and Municipal Science in the Political Science Department at Columbia University. He is also the Vice President of the Thomas Rivera Policy Institute. Professor de la Garza has written extensively on Latino elections and politics, including co-edited collections on the 1988, 1992, 96, 2000, and 2004 presidential elections. His latest book, entitled Beyond the Barrio, is a study of the 2004 election and will be published by the University of Notre Dame Press in 2009, and I am honored to have a chapter in this book. Welcome, Rodolfo. Thank you very much. What is the big story with Latinos in 2008? What's the headline? For me, the headline is that once again, where you have a large Latino population, they don't make a difference. Look at the states. New York. No difference. Illinois. No difference. California. No difference. Texas. No difference. New Jersey, where I New live. New Jersey, no difference. So the big populated the Latino concentrations are either quote unquote red or blue. But That's right. they did, they, it seems if you look at the data, they have claimed to say that they were instrumental in, let's say, Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, for example. Well, let's break those apart. It's, it's a strange thing to include New Mexico in that because Latinos are 40% of the population in New Mexico. So, of course, they're going to have an influence, 40%. So you don't really want to put Latinos in there. There, the question is, if they don't influence an election, how do you explain that? Well, in, in part, in your 2004 book, you looked at Bill Richardson and asked the question, yeah. They didn't win the state, and he was the, the governor. That's right. And so New Mexico is, is where you'd expect them to be influential. This time they were, but that's because whites divided sufficiently to carry the state. So you're saying that in order to have an influence, the white vote has to be split, and when the white vote's split, you've got a battleground state, and therefore Latinos right. have an influence. And what, what happens then, though, is that states where you wouldn't expect it can become important. Indiana, apparently. Now, of all the states where you wouldn't think Latinos no. to have a role, Indiana, right? they appeared to have swung the election to the Democrats, and that's because whites were completely divided. Latinos voted two or three to one Democrats. So it didn't matter if they were a large percentage right. of the population, but they could be critical in a tight election. What are the states that sort of out there that one wouldn't think that they would have an influence? Where they had an influence? Yeah. None. That's none. What about, talk a bit about Florida. Florida. Florida is really maybe the most interesting state because it does suggest a sea change. Until this election, the older generation of Cubans dominated the Latino vote in, in Florida. That older generation is literally dying off and being replaced by a third generation. The third generation has a very different view. They are, uh, what is the word, 
Cuban upwardly mobile cuppies or, oh, okay. or yeah, yuppie, you, uh, yuki. Yeah. Anyway, some cute little play on... Which on, doesn't make sense because right. you couldn't remember it. But that's that. right. Uh, so that the third generation is voting democratic, far unlike their grandparents uh -huh. and parents. Uh -huh. And a lot of new non-Cubans are voting, Puerto Ricans, South Americans, Central America. So the demography has changed, whether it's right. a, you know ancestry or generation. That's is right. this is this generational change occurring across the Latino communities across the United States, where the third well, generation or subsequent generations are more democratic than their no, predecessors? No, maybe in fact it goes the other way. Most places, Mexicans were more democratic in the past hmm. than they are now at least by nominal identification. Uh, Puerto Ricans have always been Democrats. So in Florida, they've become Democrats. Okay. They, they were originally Democrats, became Republicans, and now are going back to being Democrats. But if you add up the electoral votes of the states that Latinos could at least statistically be said to have had a substantial influence. You've got 19 in the three western states plus Florida. That's a fairly substantial block. Now, it doesn't change the outcome of the election, even if you gave them all to McCain. What, what are you seeing on the ground in Latino politics? Well, no. See, in some states, if you gave their vote to McCain, McCain would have won. Oh, no, no. I mean, if, yeah. if you took away them right. just in those states. Oh, yeah, right. clearly. No. Um, well, what's, what's interesting is that in Nevada, you had high mobilization, but Latinos weren't able to throw it over the top. Colorado was a highly divided state, and Latinos, uh, McCain would have won without Latinos. Uh, New Mexico right. and Florida. There's other states that he won with Latinos as part of the winning coalition, California. Right. New uh, York, New, New York. Jersey. So they were they can claim to be part of the coalition, part of the mandate, if you will. Okay, yeah, because in a sense the fact that there wasn't a competitive election in California or in New York or New Jersey on the Democratic side freed up resources that could be put into places like Colorado, Florida, That's New right. Mexico, and even Indiana for that matter. So in that sense, Latinos were important because they helped solidify democratic states. Without them there, the Democrats would have had a bigger fight, but they weren't the determining factor. Okay, let's let's take a step back. I mean, we talk about the Hispanic or the Latino vote. Is there such a thing or are Latinos by age, as we discussed in geography and socioeconomics, are we talking about different constituencies that appear, that that react to different issues and environments? Well, they're, they're, to some degree, yeah. My own thinking now is that there isn't a Latino vote as an ethnic vote, but rather Latinos come together as a class vote. When you look at the appeals that were made to Latinos, they were made around the economy, they were made around health care. Two key issues Two that key have been issues. on at the top of public opinion That's polling right. in New York and nationally. But you didn't use immigration. Third, nobody talked about no, it. Right. Wait, nobody talked about it in the debates. Right. Nobody talked about it in the convention. It was like the third rail. It was going to be the big issue and nobody talked well, about it. Well, you couldn't talk about it because nobody could win with it. If the Democrats talked about it, they would be accused of not caring about the border and pandering. If the Republicans talked about it, they would be accused of uh, cheapening citizenship and not caring about security. So McCain, who originally was pretty good on it, and Obama and McCain were together on it mm -hmm. originally, both, you, you almost got a sense of, I'll make a deal with you. You don't talk about it, I don't talk about it, because none of us can win on it. 
In your in the, the the new book on the on the two thousand four election, you talk about in the introductory chapter about the possibility of new foundations that the Republicans had an opportunity, and McCain clearly was one of those folks that you pointed out who could take advantage of it. The immigration debate just totally turned that away from the Republicans. Well, a number of things turned it away from the Republicans. First of all. You didn't have a candidate from a populist Latino state who responded. Now, they in Texas liked George Bush. Right. And so he got 40% of their vote, which is maybe a little more in Texas, which is pretty good. Absolutely. Uh, but he didn't get a majority. He didn't get a majority of any, this, of any group except the born again Christians okay. among Latinos, and there aren't many of right. those. So uh, the foundation was there if they found a candidate who would reach out to Latinos. Right. The problem is they had no such candidate, and they have no such candidate. There's nobody in the Republican side of the fence that appeals, knows about, works with Latinos. So you're saying Except looking... Except Jeb uh, in Florida. So you're saying, well, that's an interesting exception. You're saying looking forward, you can see within the Republican Party an individual, certainly not a movement, that would appeal to and be able to mobilize Latinos? No, I think... They're, they are divided on a cultural and economic crossroads. The cultural types don't want Latinos. Why? Because they see them as un-American for, for bizarre reasons. Yeah, but I mean, part of the Republican argument with Latinos was their, you know, their cultural conservatism, et cetera, et cetera, that didn't cut. See, the Republicans have never understood you can be culturally conservative and politically liberal. Okay. They've never understood that. Latin America's full of cultural conservative political So it's liberal. a fundamental misunderstanding yeah. of the population. That's right. So they figure that if you're religious and hardworking, you're a Republican. Ronald Reagan said that. Latinos are Republicans. They just don't know it. Right? False consciousness. Yeah. Okay. And, but they're not. They divide... And the issues that drive them are they want their family. Right. They want the, the right, even if they don't do it, to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. But they want jobs. They want health care. They, they want, want what education. everybody else wants, essentially. Okay. And they want to stay. They're willing to support a big state to do it. Okay. One of the problems with the the Latino electorate, if you will, that's why they've been the sleeping giant and, you know, they're swing voters in every election. We hear the same thing. Does, does this election point to greater participation rates by Latinos? Did more Latinos vote in this election than in past elections? They went up marginally. As a percentage of the national vote? Yeah, they went up marginally. But it, within certain states, I mean, you see variety across states. Right. And what are we seeing? It's, uh, the picture is that we're not sure yet. Okay. Uh, but what I don't think you saw was a, a mobilization for Obama like the black mobilization, by any means. I mean, blacks turned out at huge numbers and voted 95%. Sure. Latinos didn't mobilize in that way. Now, they didn't mobilize or they weren't mobilized, and what would take what would it take to mobilize them if not this election? I don't know. You're supposed to know. You're the <laughs> professor. You're supposed to have the, the answer. Latinos don't get mobilized. Why? I you know, that's a real puzzle. Partly because they're younger, partly because so many are children of immigrants. And haven't been socialized into the American. So you need that third. You took, you're talking that third generation is the breakthrough generation. Maybe like it may, was with Italians, for maybe, example. Maybe that's what you're talking. What about leadership? Is that another missing factor, or is that there, overrated as a factor? No, I think uh, a, there is no national Latino leader. There are leaders of organizations who would like 
to be seen as national Latino leaders, but they're not recognized on the street. Uh, I can't, you know, Bill Richardson, Latinos don't know who he is. Right, and he couldn't uh, live in New Hampshire in 2004. You know, New Mexico. I mean, New, New, yeah, New Hampshire, right, yeah. New Mexico. Um, you have congressmen who are important, Javier uh, Becerra in California. Right. You have uh, Villarraigosa. The Puerto Ricans don't know who Villarraigosa is. The Cubans don't want to know who Villarraigosa is. And so it's really a divided community. I mean, for example, I mean, even even the holiday of Cinco de Mayo is so limited and, and in, in many ways artificial. Is it is it due to the fact that you've got so many different nationalities and historical cultures here? Well, that's that's a big part of it. Latinos, remember, are an American construction. There are no Latinos in Latin America. Well, my friend uh, Luis Miranda used to be president of the Hispanic Federation, said he didn't know that he was a Latino until he saw it in the cover of Time magazine yeah, in 1980. Right. Yeah. So, so it's a construct. It absolutely it, is. is. Is it useful at all, then, to talk yeah. about Hispanics and Latinos yeah. in a, this general there, sense? There, there is a commonality, but how strong that commonality is, we don't know. The commonality is around language. The power of language is very important to Latinos, both primarily symbolically. Pri also, language has been used to punish Latinos rather than color language. New in, in, in New York, Puerto Ricans were persecuted because of language. They couldn't vote because of language. Okay. In the Southwest, you were put in bad schools because they said, you're not smart because you can't take a test in English. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter that you don't speak Spanish. We're going to tell you you're not smart because we're not going to let you take the test in English. Okay. All right. So language is a powerful symbol. Uh, there is an anti-discrimination associated with language, but not only language, that unites Latinos. But not the way anti-discrimination unites blacks. Blacks have a common experience. Right. Latinos don't have a common experience. So your, your argument early on that you've made before, in, in the sense that the Latino vote is in a sense, almost non-existent, if you will, if not irrelevant? Well, I, it, it has been irrelevant in terms of outcomes. There's no doubt about that. This is the first time since 1960 when clearly Latinos have influenced state-level results. Wow. In President's This is the uh, first time. Since 1960. Do you project forward, if, if, if you can? I mean, we don't even have the data for this election. Project forward. What do you see as the, if you will, the evolution of Latino political power? I guess in an empirical sense, and also normatively, how should it play out? Well, empirically, Latinos will become more important just because they're growing in number. But it's not clear that they're going to vote as Latinos, as ethnics. I, as I think I said earlier, um, it's a class vote. It makes more sense to think of them as a class. And in, and in fact, then that, that would tend to, you would think that that would tend to advantage the Democratic Party in right. their relationship with. That's right. So is there, is there a, a, a Republican strategy that has the opportunity to prevent Latinos from becoming like blacks, almost monolithically democratic? Well, uh, uh, yeah, um, I don't know, because see, if Latinos vote on class lines, that's not a Republican appeal. Right. So they're not going to get them there. They don't want to support language, because only, you, have, you know, English is the, the American language. Right. So you lose them on both sides. The only chance you've got is to make all Latinos rich. And, and well, I don't know, make everybody rich. Forget right. about why, forget yeah. about Latinos. Make so white I, people. I rich. don't think that's going to happen. Bored. There are, if you look at the Republican Party, there are no second or third level Latino Republican leaders. 
Are there any first? Who's in the first level? George Bush or, or Jeb Bush's son. That's it? I, as what far about as I uh, can tell. Uh, Martinez in Florida? Now marginal? He's, he's in Florida. <laughs> so that, that's it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, the, the, the Chamber of Commerce types are not connected to the base. Yeah, there seems to be a real disconnect between the various sectors of really Latino is. society in a way that you don't see why, in other groups. Why? What is well, it? Well, the disconnect with blacks is that blacks have been deeply and, uh, and viciously discriminated. Latinos do and don't, yes and no. Remember, half of Latinos weren't born here. Right. So they come in. It's very hard for them to say, think of what you did to us in Texas in 1940. You weren't here. Right. How the hell do I think about this, right? right? So, so yeah. the common experience of oppression doesn't, does, doesn't you know. work. So you have to wrap yourself in it. You have to say, we Latinos. And maybe it buys and maybe it doesn't buy. You don't seem very optimistic. So, okay, what's the future? You're going to write a new book on the 2008 election. You don't have all the data in. You know, you sort of got the big story. What are, you know, what are the, what are the chapter headings? What does the One introduction look is, like? is, did Latinos mobilize for Obama? Latinos, and the answer is, you suggest not. At this point, it's not obvious. Okay. They voted two to one, Obama. They should have voted three to one, Obama. What did you mean they should have Democrats. Voted? Just simply based on party, what was it then? Was it what uh, Hillary Clinton's pollster early on and got hammered for it, uh, Ben Dixon said no. about the hesitancy of Latinos voting for a black candidate? Let me let me begin by saying I thought Sergio Ben Dixon's comment was irresponsible and crass. He did it to fuel his candidates. Hillary Clinton, candidacy. right? And it was it was. Wrong. Latinos vote for two to one is a pretty good vote, but it wasn't three to one. But it wasn't three to one. So, why is that? I don't know. A lot of different factors, possible. A lot of, a lot of factors. But you you don't see this this hesitancy on the part of Latino voters to vote for black candidates at, at the presidential or other well, levels. Well. Um, Simply on the basis of race. Two to one is a vote for. Okay, okay. There's not a great mobilization. There's a difference between supporting and mobilizing. Now, did the Obama campaign make an attempt to mobilize those voters for their own ends? At, at one, they tried, but see, the, the dilemma early on was that he had no connection to those people. Hillary did. Right, a long history. A long history. And so once he gets the nomination, the, all the Latino leaders come in behind, but they'd already told their people to vote for Hillary. Right. So you've got, you've got a deficit to right. make up. Right, and, and, and they went two to one for Obama. The early speculation was that the Latinos might stay home or vote Republican, right. to, those who supported right. Hillary. But was that likely given no, their issue no. stance? That was, that was, as I said, silly and crass. Latinos had voted uh, for blacks a variety of places. Denver, they voted for the mayor of Denver. They voted in, in uh, for the mayor of Dallas. They voted for Dave Dinkins in yeah. New York. So that that was just. Is there? It was a, kind of a race. If a white guy had said that about whites, he would have been accused of race. Yeah, and, and 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 it sounded like that. What, but it, what is the? It, does this coalition in black and brown, this black Hispanic coalition, does it exist, or no. did it ever exist? No. They, these are groups that compete. You know, is there a coalition between Jews and Italians? Depends on the issue. Okay. So again, it, it's it, again, it, you, you're asking us to be sensitive to the lack of, you know, monolithicness, if you will, in terms yeah. of Latinos' attitude. Why should they be one right. group? Okay. 
Latino leaders of the future? I mean, I mean, is that, I mean there are some uh, congressmen that have potential, but they're going to be a new kind of leader. Ken Salazar. In Colorado, Senator from Colorado. I think uh, is re reflective of the new type. What about Bob Menendez in New Jersey, my senator? Um, More old school, Paul? Yeah, and, and uh, he's kind of conservative on a lot of issues. Ken is very ethnic without talking it. Ken is ethnic. Now, I mean, when we think ahead to 2012, 2016, while well, presuming that Obama runs again and Biden is around, they run. Is he a national figure? Yeah. So we're talking about, is there, you talk about lack of a cadre of, you know, second and third tier people who can come up in the Republican Party. We've got it in the Democratic? Yeah. You've got it. You've got Latino mayors who are Democrats. You've got Latino leading state legislators who are Democrats, you've got, you've got a whole, all of those backup tiers mm -hmm. in Southern California just full of Latinos. Mm -hmm. South Texas, more than South Texas, full of Latinos. Arizona, you know, Congressman Grijalba out of Arizona. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a lot of those guys. You okay. don't have them in the Republican okay. Party. Okay. So this is, this constituency, if we can call it a constituency, is likely to stay Democratic? No, and they'll stay Democratic. They will. Okay, last 30 seconds. What's your expectations for Latinos over the next couple of years politically? Well, and right. what's your hope? My expect They're going to wage, like occurred in New York, I hope they don't wage a stupid fight over appointments. Okay. Uh, they're going to, they deserve some appointments. But I hope they don't start, well, you got three, I want two. Dividing the spoils. Yeah, I hope they don't do that. Okay. Uh, my fear is they might. So we have, we have to wait for, for you to come back on to tell us what happened after you look at the data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is. Thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.